In this video, I will show you how to add and remove local user accounts, how to add and remove local groups, and how to add and remove users to and from those groups. Local user and group management only comes into play when you install your server as either a member server or a standalone server without Active Directory. Once Active Directory is installed, all of your local user administrative tools will no longer be available. There are several ways in which, there are several ways in which we can get to our local user and group management tools. One way is to go through the Start menu, go up to Programs, go over to Administrative Tools, and then Computer Management, which brings up the Computer Management MMC, Microsoft Management Console. But the way I like to get to it, a little shortcut, is to right-click on your My Computer and go to Manage. Also brings up the same console. From this console, you can administer quite a few things on your server. The one thing we're looking at here is the local user and groups. When clicking on that plus sign, I get two different subfolders, the user subfolder and the group subfolder. When I click on the user container, you will see the list of users that are installed by default. Two of which, the support account and the guest account, are disabled by default. And then there's the administrator account. So what we want to do now is add a new user. And in order to do that, we go up to the actions menu and we select new user. This brings up the add new user dialog box. From here, we just type in a name of a new unique username and the full name of the user, Todd Palumbo, and description, cool guy, and a password of password for now. Makes it nice and easy. Then I have a couple other options here. This one says that I can set it so that the user must change that password the next time they log in. And it will be mandatory the next time they log in that they change that password. I can also set it so the user cannot change that password. If I want them to remain with that password forever, I can just check this box. Another option is I can set it so the password never expires. I would click this option if I have a local security group policy already in place that states that the user has to change their password every 30 days. This will keep that from being enforced on this particular user. And then I can disable this account. Uh, that's like the guest account if I just want to create it and I don't want to be able to have anyone log in as that person yet. And now in order to create that user, we just click on the Create button. You will notice that the Add New User dialog box does not go away. It stays there in case you want to add more users at the same time. Right now that's the only one we're going to add, so we're going to say Close. And you will see we now have created the Todd user, full name Todd Palumbo, and uh, description, cool guy. And now that we have our new user, all we have to do is simply double click on him and it brings up his Properties page. You will notice the General tab of the Properties page is very similar to the Add dialog box that we encountered a moment ago. In addition to the General tab, I now have a number of other tabs available to me. And another one is called the Members of tab, and when I click on that, it shows me all of the groups that Todd is currently a member of. Todd is a member of the Users group by default. If I wish to add Todd to, say, the Administrators group, I can click on the Add button, and I could take the Administrators group here, straight doors, group, and I could say Check Name. And as long as that group is available, it will say Yes, there it is, and I can click OK. Todd would now be a member of the administrator's group in addition to the user's group. And if I wanted to add another group, just say the backup operator's group, click Add, and now, instead of doing typing it in, just say I don't know exactly the name of the backup operator's group. Well, I can click on the Advanced tab and click Find Now. This will show me a list of all the groups that are currently on my server. And there it is. It's not Backup Group, it's called Backup Operator. See, I would not have known that right offhand. So I can double click on that and go OK, and OK. That way I know for sure that that group is available and I don't have to worry about typing it in. If I want to remove a group, I just highlight it and click on the Remove button. Todd is now removed from the Backup Operators group and he is only a member of the Users and Administrators group. As for the rest of the tabs, they will be covered in future videos because the Environment tab, the Sessions tab, the Remote Control tab, and the Terminal Services Profile tab all have to do with Terminal Services and Terminal Server users only. The dial-in tab really only replies to the remote access capabilities of Windows 2003 server. And the profile tab is pretty much a tab that's just left over from the old Windows NT 4.0 days. So for now, we're just going to click OK on Todd and close him up. We will now head over to the groups container, which will give us a list of all the local groups on this server. You will notice that the administrator group here on top, if we double click on it, has Todd in it as a member. If we wish to, we could remove Todd right from here, and we could get rid of him and apply. If we want to add Todd back to it, we can always add him from here too. And just like the groups, I could just type in my user that I want. I could do check name and it will grab the name and add Todd to that group. Todd is now an administrator again. We click OK. 
Now let's just say we need a new group, one that's not uh, already built in for us. Well, we go up to the Actions menu, and we go New Group, just like when we add a user. And from here we can add a group, like the Accountants group. And we can add uh, Description, Bean Counters. And now we can say, well, who do we want as a member in this group? We can add it right here. If we go to this, it brings up this familiar dialog box again, where we could type in Todd if we wanted to add him uh, as a user in that group. Or if we wanted to, we could do the Advanced tab again, which will bring us up a list of all of our groups and users on the server this time. And there's Todd. And we can grab him like that. Click OK. And Create. This will create the Accountants group with uh, one member, member Todd. Here's the Accountants group. There are a bunch of bean counters. And Todd is a member of the Accountants group. Well, now that we've created a group, let's just say we want to delete the group. Well, all we have to do is right-click on the group and choose Delete. When we do this, it does bring up a dialog box asking, are you sure you want to delete this group, Accountants? The reason it does that is it really wants to make sure you want to delete it, because you can never truly recreate that group ever again. Even if you create the same exact group with the name Accountants and put the same users in it, it's not exactly the same. The reason that is is because when you create an object in Windows 2003 Server, it gives it what's called a SID. The SID is a security identifier, and it is unique to that particular object and can never really be recreated ever again. It's what keeps every object completely separate in Windows Mind, actually, if you want to think of it that way. So it really wants to make sure that this is what you want to do, and it is in this case, so we'll say yes. And then the group is deleted. We can also delete users in a similar fashion. If we go back to the Users container, and see our user Todd. We can right click on Todd and we can say delete. When we do that we get the same exact warning from Microsoft saying hey are you sure you want to do this because again Todd has his very own unique SID and can never truly be recreated again and if we were sure we'd click yes. But I'm going to say no here because I'm not ready to kill off Todd yet. The reason is I want to show you one more thing and that is how to change Todd's password. The way we go about resetting Todd's password is we right click on him and we say set password which of course brings up another dialog box. Are you sure you want to do this? The reason is because resetting a password could cause some loss of damage if the user is using encryption uh, on the file system and it's based on that password and you reset the password obviously then the user will not be able to get into their data. But that is not the case so we will just proceed and change Todd's password. And it just comes up. It doesn't even ask for the old password. Because we're an administrator we can just enforce a brand new password so we can just change it to test just to get rid of that old password password. So, and then click OK and the password has been set. And that's all there is for setting a new password for Todd. Well now you have learned how to add and remove users, add and remove groups, and how to add and remove users to and from those groups in Windows 2003 Server. Well I hope this video has been informative for you and thank you very much. Bye. Hello and welcome to the Windows 2003 Server Series Local User and Group Management. In this video I will show you how to add and remove local user accounts, how to add and remove local groups, and how to add and remove users to and from those groups. Local User and Group Management only comes into play when you install your server as either a member server or a standalone server without Active Directory. Once Active Directory is installed,